And today we're going to jumpstart words. And I want to talk about words. Um, George Carlin was a huge fan of words. I love some of the ways that he would slice words and look at words. One of the things I always like to do is to look up the meaning of a word and the etymology of a word because I often realize that we don't use our words correctly or we reuse our words and don't realize the power in them. And I want to touch on that again. That was part of what I discussed yesterday in Abracadabra. In unity, the faith in which I'm ordained, it is believed that we have these power centers through our body. And, and one of them is the power of power. And that power is in our throat. Now, why is that? I wanted to, to talk a bit more about that. Why is it so important? Well, because we have these 45,000 thoughts going on, 45 to 60,000 thoughts going on in our head every single day. Now, some of those we choose to move into the checkout line. You know what I mean? It's like we're looking at products on Amazon and those are the thoughts going through our heads. But occasionally we move something into the checkout line and actually buy it. Now, how do we do that? We move it into the checkout cart and we purchase it by speaking it, by speaking it aloud. Now, this literally creates, if you believe that we live in a vibratory energy field of life, uh, there, there, there's a belief that there is an ether that connects us all and the universe, literally the universe, uh, that there is an unseen ether and there are other people who have discounted that. But the point is that there is a vibratory energy that comes off of you to the world. And when you speak it out loud, sometimes it's just the very act of you hearing it that makes you go, yeah, that's exactly right. So then a belief gets built on that. And so our words, we tend to think our words are just words. They're not. They're the most powerful things in the world. I notice some new words that have come up or new phrases as a result of the coronavirus. Tell me if you've noticed this. Number one, when people leave each other now, when they are talking or whatever, they always say, be safe. The, the new command is, or the new exit line is, be safe. And the other one is, when you greet someone, it's, how are you holding up? How are you holding up? You know, the, 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 the discord that's going on in our country right now, and again, many of you may be watching this in the future and recording or listening to the podcast in the future, and, but right now, you've got words coming from one group saying that it is safe to reopen the country. You've got words coming from the other group saying that it is not safe to reopen the country, and it is that void between the two that is creating the discord. Our words are extremely, extremely powerful. The other reason that our words are extremely powerful is that our words attract people who agree with those words. And that's kind of the point I wanted to make. Because when you see these protests that are going on, the people who agree that the country should be opened up tend to gravitate towards each other. The people who disagree gravitate towards each other. The same is true in your own life. If you're a person that gets to work and complains about work, you're going to attract to you other people who complain about work and are unhappy. It's simply that like attracts like thing that we talked about before. How we choose to construct our words is so important. I remember one time I heard a speaker say this, and I've always loved it. Don't remember who it was, thought it was great. And, there's, and he said that there's a big difference between saying to somebody, what's upsetting you? And saying, what's wrong with you? Do you get it? What's wrong with you implies a judgment, whereas what's upsetting you or what's bothering you shows a genuine caring and a genuine interest. So if I could get you to remember only one thing today, it's to go back to what we talked about yesterday, and that is that literally your words are like little magic bo bombs that go off. And you can think they're, they're innocent and there's nothing wrong with that. I, inter I did an interview yesterday with a huge podcast uh, called uh, HowSomethingWorks.net, I think is the name of it, something like that. Anyway, I did this interview and the guy, the guy thought that when I was talking about not complaining and about talking about contextualizing your life in positive terms, you could tell that not only was this a totally foreign concept to him, but it was a little irritating. 
Uh, you'll notice that people who are settled into their discord or, or are content with being malcontents, okay, they are put off by people who see things in a better, happier light. They are irritated by it. Now, you have to ask yourself a very important question. Why? Why are they irritated? And the thing is, whenever we have chosen a lower path, whenever we've chosen something in our lives that is more ego-based as opposed to our highest self-based, our, our divine self, whenever we choose that and someone else demonstrates a loftier choice, we're upset by it. It's amazing. I mean, and, and this is not to in any way uh, put a judge judgment on it, but... I choose to be vegan and I don't care what anybody else eats. And people who know me will tell you that that is absolutely true. And yet, uh, <laughs> there are people that I meet down here, especially a lot of older or retired people down here in Florida, that if they we're talking about food and they say, have you tried the new fish place? No, I haven't really tried it. Uh, well, why not? Don't you like fish? No, I just, I don't choose to eat fish. Why not? Well, I, I, I chose to be vegan years they get angry at me. They get angry at me over a personal choice. The same is true back when people were smoking. You know, here, you want a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. What's wrong with you? You know, so I want you to understand that there is this natural propensity for us to attack people who make higher, more elevated choices. And yet the joy in life comes from making those higher, more elevated choices. You feel better. You feel spiritually cleaner and you attract to you people who are themselves happier and healthier as well. Let me catch up saying hello to everybody and then I got a few more parting things I want to share with you. Good morning, says Cheryl. Linda Farrell says, morning, Lisa. So true, says Paula. Lisa says, hi, Linda. <laughs> Trish says, very true. Gail says, I'm hearing words that are angry. You're hearing words that from me that are angry? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Uh, sharing this wonderful message, says Denise. Lorianne Kenny Carson says, I have noticed that people actually pause and wait for each other's answers now. When they ask, how are you? Previously, it was just a greeting. It's true people are saying, be safe. You know, that's a very good point. I do feel that one of the benefits is that even though we can't be physically closer, we are becoming emotionally closer. Uh, Ara says, are you vegan? I didn't know that. Yes, yes, I am actually. I've been vegan for 10 years. Yes, spiritually clean. Daniel Byrne, my buddy says, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Daniel Byrne. So here's some things I want to talk to you about real quick. I want to leave with you. And I've actually done a jump start in this trying to be clever before, but I want to jump start your butt. <laughs> and that is, I want you to be cognizant of the words that come out of your mouth today. I always think of um, Chris Tucker in uh, that movie with Jackie Chan. And I know Michelle right now is screaming, it's rush hour. There you go. Uh, uh, rush hour, yes. In rush hour when he, uh, Chris Tucker goes, can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well. Can you be aware of the words that are coming out of your mouth today? And are you affirming health and happiness and peace and prosperity and goodness and abundance and success? Or are you just getting down and wallowing in the ain't it awful, ain't it awful? Have you heard this? Well, ain't that awful. Have you heard this? Well, ain't that awful. Because it depresses your immune system. You want to stay healthy in this coronavirus time? Stop complaining. Stop complaining. No more people, says Gail. Uh, no from people. You hear people are complaining. Yes, I agree with that, uh, or angry. Yes, they are. Um, Eris says, wow, incredible. Thank you so much. Bless you. Um, I want to talk to you about using the word but, and that is that when you catch yourself going down a path that is negative or not in the direction that you feel is in your highest and best, correct yourself. Use the word but. Let me give you an example. Um, and I, I have no exact one, so I'm, you'll get it though, but, <laughs> but, um, so I get to be, uh, uh, here in this house or in my home for two weeks, three weeks all by myself. And let me just, let me say it as a complaint. Well, I've got to be in my house for at least three weeks all by myself, but I'm not really all by myself. 
I've got Teddy Bear with me, my little dog, and I've also got friends I can chat with, and I've got people. Do you see what I mean? Use the word but. The word but is an erasure word. You know how it, I, I know the word but is an erasure word? Because if you and I were talking and I said, you know, I really like you, but <laughs> that erases it. You're really pretty, but see, it erases everything that comes before. It can also erase your complaints and your negative comments. I'm really happy and. <laughs> okay, use the word but to erase your negative words. Uh, goes back to your message about victim or victor. Yes, exactly, says to Cynthia. Thanks, Bill, says Therese. And uh, if you use but, do you need to change your bracelet? No, because you caught yourself. The purpose of the bracelet is to be a mindfulness exercise. And if you are so mindful as to have caught yourself and to have erased what you just said, no, you don't. You don't need to. Uh, Mood bracelet. Time for me to ring off because I'm going to move on to my time of meditation. We are getting very close to launching this. I could, would say it could be easily by Monday. All right. So complaint free meditation, it's going to be called. We're going to do a 20 to 30 minute live, live meditation in a private Facebook group. You're going to get a workbook on meditation that I'm putting together. It's going to be really comprehensive and I think you're going to be excited about it. Be sure and share uh today share today's message and you could win a will bowen tumbler whoever writes the most engaging thing to get people to uh to watch the uh recording of today's jumpstart could win will win rather a uh will bowen tumbler hillary says thank you jerome for letting me know about this amazing live event thank you will for making a difference in our world you my honor hillary you see it's because Jerome invited Hillary to the party that Hillary is at the party. So thank you, Jerome. This is how it happens. You do the same. Denise, getting back to using the word, but if I slip and say something negative, complaining and quickly catching and say, but, and follow with something positive. No, you don't. That's why I answered that one. Good. So I, I we're just a little bit behind. Uh, Lisa says, wonderful. That's awesome, says Cindy. Eris says, I feel so blessed to be here. You are blessed and you are a blessing. Cynthia Barcher's awesome. Complaint-free meditation. I wish I could show you. The logo looks really great. Mirzloff worked on the logo. He created the logo. He's created the ads. So more to come, more to come, more to come. Teresa Brandy Cotton says, thank you, Will. Linda Farrell says, great message. Thank you. I'm glad I don't have to switch my bracelet. Me too. Listen, everybody, make it a wonderful day. I will be here tomorrow. I'm doing this six days a week, especially during this time of uh, quarantine. I feel like we all could use a little bit of positivity first thing in the morning. So I will be with you tomorrow morning. Be sure and join me at 8 o'clock and do just like Jerome did. Find somebody and invite them to the party. Bring your friends. Would love to meet them. Enjoy today. Have a great weekend. Mark says, thank you for your wise words. Trish says, uh, me too, Denise. To Denise Lewis and Patty says share and share why you are sharing that's an important thing share today's video share why you're sharing and make sure you put a comment in this thread that you shared so I know to go back and look so that we can make sure that you're in the in the pot to win and you've got to share it within the next three and a half hours within the next three and a half hours all right listen everybody bless you have a great day time for me to meditate bye bye no more complaining people their lives are changing we're flying high creating a complaint free world no more